This video will explain how to estimate stresses acting in soil mass. Let's look at this diagram and we'll look at soil element at the depth of a Z. And the soil element will have the area of 1 square meters. In this case, we can estimate the total stress that is acting on this soil element as a unit weight of this uh, soil element multiplied by the depth that is z. Now let's look at an example where we have uh, three different layers. We have uh, a layer of sand and we're given the unit weight of it, uh, which is 20 kN per cubic meters. We have silty clay with the unit weight of 16 kN per cubic meters. And we have uh, another layer of uh, sandy clay with the unit weight of 18 and I would like to estimate the stresses acting at uh, point B. In this case what we'll do is we're going to use the formula that uh, stress is equal to unit weight times uh, z and then I will work it out uh, from the top layer then we're going to add another layer, second layer and then we're going to go all the way down to the point of interest, which is point B. And then we will uh, sum it up. So we'll start that um, with the first layer. The total stress uh, will be a uh, unit weight of 20 times uh, the thickness of this layer is 10 meters. Then we're going to add second layer. The unit weight is uh, 16 times uh, the thickness of the second layer it's also 10 meters and then um, to the point b there is uh, 5 meters and then we'll multiply it by the uh, unit weight of the sandy clay which is 18 kilonewton per cubic meters and that will give us um, uh, about 450 kilonewtons per cubic meter uh, square meters so uh, this is the stress action at point B. Um, total stress that is acting on soil element can be divided uh, into two components. Uh, the first one is effective stress and the other one is polar pressure. So uh, the effective stress is a stress that is being transferred to soil mass uh, through the uh, soil particles. Um, in particular through the contacts between soil particles. So you see these are soil particles and if we apply load uh, to the soil that uh, on the point of contact uh, the load will be transferred from the top to the bottom. So these points. Uh, the effect of stress it's very important characteristics uh, of uh, soil in the soil mass and uh, would like to see a high effective stress because high effective stress it's uh, typically uh, correlated uh, to the uh, greater stability of soil. Um, if the soil is uh, saturated or partially saturated there will be some uh, water present in the pore space so in this case the load that will transfer to the soil element will be also um, will be carried uh, by the water. So like in this case, uh, you will see that we have water in between particles. So the stress that we apply, that vertical stress will be also uh, carried out by the water. And this will create what we call polar pressure. Uh, polar pressure is uh, not very good uh, for engineering purposes because um, water doesn't have any bearing capacity and it will actually decrease the bearing capacity of soil mass. So uh, what we can say is that uh, the greater the polar pressure, uh, the lower the strength of soil is. Now let's see how we can estimate polar pressure in the field. Uh, to do that, uh, we would like to know the level of uh, groundwater level. We also call it groundwater table, and this line shows the level of groundwater table. 
Uh, to get that, uh, we would like to install the piezometer. Uh, piezometer. And uh, this uh, piezometer will measure the uh, height of the water in it. So this is all water. Um, we also know that um, the soil uh, underneath the groundwater table is uh, typically saturated and in uh, many, many uh, problems that we deal with in geotechnical engineering, we make assumption that uh, the soil below the groundwater table is uh, fully saturated. However, it may not be completely true. There is still air bubbles uh, trapped uh, in the groundwater and uh, um, that may not be 100% uh, saturated, but to simplify uh, most of the problems that we deal with, we make this assumption that uh, the soil is uh, saturated. So now let's see how we can calculate uh, pore water pressure at point A. Uh, to do that, we need to know the distance from uh, the point A to the ground water table. And usually we use uh, H with small case W. And uh, uh, to estimate the pore water pressure, we also need to remember the uh, unit weight of water. In this case, we use 9.81. And then we're going to multiply by the distance from point A to the groundwater table. Now let's look at this example where we have uh, additional load. And this additional load will generate uh, additional 25 kilonewtons per square meters. And we have groundwater level uh, here which is uh, two meters below the ground surface. And we have a silty clay, and we would like to estimate um, stresses acting at point A. So um, we'll start with the uh, definition of a total stress, which is a, a unit weight uh, multiplied by uh, Z, which is the depth to point A. And um, when we estimate effective stress, this is effective stress. Uh, we need to uh, know the total stress and subtract pore water pressure. So first let's uh, estimate the total stress. Uh, total stress will consist of uh, additional load, which is 25 kilonewtons per square meters. And then um, we're going to add uh, um, this uh, 12 uh, meters uh, of the silty clay. So we know that the unit weight of the silty clay is uh, 20 kilonewtons per cubic meters. So we're going to write 20 times 12 and that will give us 265 kilonewtons per square meters. So now estimates, um, we can estimate water pressure. And for pore water pressure, we use uh, this equation where we use a unit weight of water and then we will multiply uh, by the height of water above point A. So uh, you should remember by now that the unit weight of water is uh, 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meters. And uh, in this case, we'll see that uh, this is going to be uh, HW. So it's the distance from groundwater level. And this is groundwater level uh, to point A, which is uh, 12 minus 2 will give us 10 meters. In this case, uh, we can say that uh, unit weight, it's... Uh, uh, sorry, water pressure is unit weight times uh, 12 minus 2 will give us approximately 98.1 kilonewtons per square meters. And finally, we'll estimate the effective stress, which is total stress minus water pressure. Total stress is uh, 265 and pore water pressure it's uh, 98.1 will give us 166.9 
kilonewtons per square meters. So at point A, um, we have effective stress uh, equal to this much. We have pull the pressure at point A this much. And the total stress is uh, 265 kilonewton per square meters. Um, in the field, uh, when we deal with soil mass, uh, we deal with uh, two stresses that uh, act uh, perpendicularly. So we deal with uh, vertical stress. And uh, uh, the other stress that we also need to know uh, for many engineering applications, it's a uh, horizontal stress. Uh, we use sigma H. So um, once we know the vertical stress, we can estimate the horizontal stress. And to do that, we uh, need to know the coefficient of uh, earth pressure at rest, which is K0. Um, so uh, this is the uh, definition. It's um, effective horizontal stress divided by the effective vertical stress. Just make sure that uh, when you uh, estimate stresses and you use the coefficient of uh, earth pressure at rest, you always use effective stress conditions. Don't use total stress conditions. Uh, this coefficient uh, typically depends on the type of soil and uh, it may vary from uh, 0 0.8 to sometimes to 1.1, 1.2. So let's look at our final example for this tutorial. Uh, in this case, uh, we are required to estimate uh, horizontal stresses at uh, point A, and point A is here. Point A is uh, right on the boundary between uh, clay and sand. So this is a special uh, case where we uh, estimate stresses right on the boundary between uh, two soil elements. So in this case, we will have uh, two answers. So we're going to have uh, one answer for the clay layer, and we're going to use the coefficient of earth pressure stress for the clay. And we're going to have the second answer for the sand layer using this coefficient of earth pressure at rest uh, given for sand. So this is the way it is done. So now let's see how we can find these uh, uh, stresses. So we start with the total stress acting at point A. So total stress uh, will be equal. Um, we're going to start with the first layer. And the first layer it's water. A unit weight of water it's 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meters. So we're going to include this one as well for total stress calculations 9.81 times 3. Then a second layer it's 8 meters of uh, clay with the unit weight of uh, 16. So we're going to write that it's uh, 16. Uh, times uh, 8 and that will give us um, about 157.4 kilonewtons per square meters. So now let's estimate the uh, pore water pressure at uh, point A. So um, in this case we see that the water level is right on the surface. So the distance uh, from point A to the uh, water level is going to be 11 meters. So we're going to write that uh, water pressure. It's um, unit weight of water times uh, the uh, height of the water above point A. And this is 3 meters of just surface water and plus 8 meters, which is in the clay. That will give us 107.9 uh, kilonewtons per square meters. Now we're going to estimate effective stress. It's total stress minus polar pressure. Uh, we'll have uh, total stress 157.4 minus uh, 107.9.
will give us approximately 49.5 kilonewtons per square meters. So uh, now once we know the effective stress, and this is vertical effective stress, uh, we should be able to estimate the horizontal effective stress. And we're going to use uh, uh, this formula, which is a coefficient of earth pressure stress. It's effective stress uh, horizontal divided by effective stress vertical. So from here we will get that uh, horizontal effective stress it's equal uh, vertical effective stress times coefficient of earth pressure stress so as already mentioned because the point is on the boundary between clay and sand so we're going to first get um, horizontal effective stress uh, for the clay and then we're going to do the same procedure and calculate it for the sand so for clay and we know that the uh, uh, coefficient of earth pressure address is 1.1. What we're going to do now, we're going to find horizontal effective stress. That's uh, vertical effective stress, which is 49.5 times 1.1 will give us 54.5 kilonewtons per square meters. And then we'll change it to horizontal stress, total horizontal stress. We just need to add water pressure. So it will be uh, effective stress, 54.5, uh, plus um, water pressure, it's uh, 107.9. 107.9 will give us 162.4 kilonewton per square meters. So these are uh, horizontal stresses action at the bottom uh, at point A at the bottom of clay layer and we're going to do the same procedure but now for sand. So for sand uh, the coefficient of earth pressure stress is uh, 0 0.9. So we'll estimate horizontal effect stress first which is um, vertical effective stress times uh, the coefficient 0 0.9 uh, will give us approximately 44.6 kilonewton per square meters. Now we're going to estimate the total horizontal stress um, at point A for the sand layer. We are going to add water pressure again. So we know that effective stress is 44.6 and we'll add water pressure, which is uh, same 107.9. That will uh, result in uh, 152.5 kilonewtons per square meters. So this is the answer uh, for this problem.